Hello there folks, it's Ilya and we will continue my top 50 of all time. Today we are taking a look at top 20 to top 11. Uh, it's going to be a really cool, nice list there because it's a uh, upper half of my top 50. So without the further ado, let's just kick it off and go to my number 20. My number 20 is a game that has a storytelling element in it. And um, to be honest, I like storytelling elements uh, that are blended into the game mechanics the way that it's not like a main mechanic, you know. So, for example, the Tales of Arabian Nights is not really for me. I, I like, I dislike this game, or I even hated this game because it's it's random. It's all about storytelling and. The things were random, I could pick anything and anything could happen and some people like it and it's like a sandbox. But it's not for me. So my top 20 game is Above and Below. Above and Below is a worker placement game. It's a Euro game with storytelling element there. Uh, the storytelling element uh, comes up uh, when you go exploring. When you go exploring, you send some of your workers. Uh, your workers have a dice value with which they can get the lanterns and lanterns are basically let's say resources to get something in exploration so um, first of all you roll dice for for the exploration to see what uh, number story you need to read then another person will read it for you and he will give you choices and then you will uh, pick uh, one of the choices and then you will try to like a skill check basically to do the skill check if you pass you will get something uh, like, let's say you will get some resources, extra resources, extra coins or something like that, or reputation. And there, there are small things and the storytelling is rather easy there. So you just pick something, if you get it, you get it and that's it. So these are reso extra resources you get, the extra bonuses. But it's still really cool how you, uh, the, the decisions that you make there are, are rather like, it's you can like understand the decisions what that you should make from the story like for example if you see a, an old woman uh, will you rob her or will you help her you know it's like if you will rob her you get gold but you will lose reputation and it's it's logical you know that's that's what i like about uh, the stories in above and below if you can understand me what what i tried to tell you try to uh, tell you but basically Everything else is just a plane uh, building up your tableau of cards from where you can get extra resources, points in the end of the game, um, some potions and ciders which help you, uh, the people uh, to get your people uh, to the ready area again. Because um, the workers that you, that's another interesting thing, the workers that you use during the turn go to the rest area. And in order to get them back from the rest area to the ready area, you need to have uh, beds. You have a basic three beds uh, at the beginning of the game and three workers. But if you get more workers, you should get more beds. And they are on the cards, so basically buildings. So you build the buildings, you get more beds. Sometimes it's really hard to get more beds. So you need to decide which workers will stay in the rest area and will be unused for the turn and which workers will go to the ready area. So, that's, that's another cool aspect of the game. So above and below is, is really cool worker placement, storytelling, Euro, medium weight, medium to lightweight game. Um, it's Ryan Lockett, by the way, sorry, I didn't mention it. it's Ryan Lockett. Um, he makes development, he makes design, he makes graphical layout and everything. So he does everything for his game. So it's, it's a really cool looking, great production above and below my number 20. My number 19 is a, another game that Bruno Catala made together with um, Ludovic Montblanc and it's one of the most beautiful games out there and some people hate the art. I, All right, I can understand that uh, some people don't like this dark art but it's Abyss. Abyss has just a wonderful um, box cover where you just have a face of a whatever animal fish folk and nothing else and the information is on the sides of the box and on the back of the box but the box front is 
great, you know, it's just a face, it's really cool. Everything uh, inside is just beautiful, the board, uh, pearls, which are like real pearls, and the resources, you know, the, the, card, the card art and the art on the, um, on the what, whatever they call the locations and so on. We even have the expansions where there are black pearls, really cool black pearls. Um, the cups for the pearls and everything is like the production is so great, you know, it's the art is so great and Beneath that great art is a really cool game as well. Some people were rather disappointed that This game was light, you know, it's it's the art is so gorgeous that people have a really high expectation then go in and It's a bidding and set collection game It is on one hand, but I like uh, how the mechanics work. There is some randomness in them, but a little bit. And it's rather a medium to light weight game where I, I like that set collection aspect of collecting lords, which give you special grant to special abilities. And but at some point, in order to get more points at the end of the game, you need to get locations. And whenever you get lords with keys, you automatically get locations. And locations will cover the special powers of your lords. Which means that at some point you will lose the, your special powers. And also the bidding uh, or, and the push like sorry, push like element of exploring. Where you turn over cards and then you... Um, show the cards to others so they can beat on them. If nobody beats, then you can uh, take the card for, for free or at some point you have to take the card and so on. It's like a, all the mechanics are a little bit random, but at some point they're like uh, really cool and they blend together into one wonderful game. It's my number 19. And we played the expansion as well, uh, which gives the uh, corruption uh, pearls, which are black pearls and gives this treasure thing there, which is another rather random thing, but I liked it. It's like, it's more of that exploration thing where you go, you dive in and you find treasure chests and like tre deep water treasures. And then you have this, another aspect of pusher like element where if you get two of the same number, it's all this like basically discard. But um, I, I liked it with the expansion quite a lot. Uh, expansion is really good. And just everything that works, it's, it, it works smoothly, you know, it works well. It's a lighter game, yes. But for that kind of game, it just works great. And that's Abyss, my number 19. So my number 18 is a game that I think I saw it on Kickstarter and I didn't really look into it. I didn't really like the arts uh, at first and the theme and so on. It's like, no, whatever. But um, when this game has started to have some buzz and hype, I looked into this game like the other way and found out that I won this game. And that's World's Fair. World's Fair is a sort of an area control Euro game where you're trying to grab cards and you're trying to control um, areas, majorities, in order to score these cards. Um, basically, the cards are based on locations on the board. And, and the theme is the World's Fair. You have um, uh, different um, aspects like uh, engineering, electricity, whatever, agriculture, inventions. And there are lots of these historical uh, writings on the cards where you can read about different facts that were based on, on, on real history, which is really cool. It's like a teaching tool, somewhat. And it's a really cool um, a bidding and area control game, where you need to see what cards you should grab at, at what moment and so on. I just like it quite much, you know? It's like, of course, it's my, uh, it was, it's my 18, which is a really high number. It's just another smooth game from Alex Kevern, was it the designer of the game? Um, he made another game called Gold West, which uh, was, uh, I think it was higher on my list somewhere. Yes, yeah. 
Uh, it was my number 36. So, but the World's Fair is just another smooth. There's nothing new. There's nothing innovative. But it's a smooth, like classical Euro game with the cards. And I like all sorts of cards games. I like cards if the cards are present in board games. So it's just a really cool, really cool smooth. Classic Euro game, a little bit of that point salad and set collection there, which I also like. So that's World's Fair number 18. Number 17 is a game that uh, first when I looked into it, I, I liked how it looked, but I didn't really think they would like the gameplay and Alina wasn't sure about this game at all. So, But at some point we got to try it in one of the board gaming camps in Estonia. And we tried to buy this game from the owner of the copy, but he didn't want to sell it because he liked it quite much as well. And that's Kings of Air and Steam. And Kings of Air and Steam is a pick up and deliver game um, with airships. And um, uh, the mechanic there, really cool mechanic, is that, of course, the prices change on the goods that you will further like sell into, into the cities. But what I like there is that there is sort of a chain reaction thing. No, not the chain reaction, but uh, a chain of uh, actions you should make in order to get the profits. Uh, you have to uh, go to the factory and get the resources from the factory. Then you have to transport them with your airship, really cool, a big airship, uh, to the depot, which is located somewhere near on your map on a rail track basically and from the trail track you will then transfer the goods to the city which is a really cool part it's like a two like two layered pickup and delivery where you not only just take goods with your airship and then send them somehow you know it's rather go with the airship get it with the airship transport it to depot and from depot it's already on a sort of a train, rail, and then you get uh, the goods to the city and you get the profit, which is really nice uh, mechanism. Also, the other mechanism is programming, where you program how your airship moves. And it's not that much, and we all program at the same time, which doesn't give too much downtime to the game. And the turns are simple, you just, like, you move, you, you can also do some extra actions during your turn, but the programs are basically movement, different movement, and how the airship can turn, there are some special um, movement rules about that one. But I like all the blend of that, and uh, also what I like is that you can upgrade, you can upgrade uh, your rails, I think, was it? Yeah, but you basically, what I like the most is that you can upgrade your airship, in order for it to move faster, in order for it to use better cards. First of all, you have some cards, but you cannot use them all because you need to upgrade your airship to, for it to become more powerful, which is really cool. So that's like an economy style pick up and deliver game with steampunk setting, with cool uh, components there. And I'm so sad that the Kickstarter for expansion, which uh, would add contracts, which would uh, be useful in a two-player game, didn't fund. And it just, it's just really sad. It's a really cool game. It's an overlooked game. It should have more hype. And I hope somebody will pick it up, because as I understand, Tasty Mitchell Games will not publish this game anymore, will not publish uh, expansion anymore. But I want this game to be picked up by someone and done with the expansion together, so let's just hope for the best. I really would love to see expansion and a little bit like tweaked uh, special powers, which you have also the special powers there, but um, the main negative about the game was that the special powers are not balanced well. Okay, you can take away special powers, you can play without them, there's a base, but these special powers are cool. And I think the expansion can always tweak the special powers or have the stickers or whatever, something, something like that to, to um, make this negative go away and add even more things like contracts and stuff. I really like the contract aspect there in the expansion. So let's hope for the best and that was Kings of Air and Steam number 17. Number 16 is a bigger game, 
and it has a pickup and delivery aspect in it as well and quite strong one if you want to get uh, money that way and that's Merchants and Marauders and Merchants and Marauders is a perfect Cari like Caribbean setting game for me like ships and age of um, Renaissance and the ships and what whatever basically all of that you know Pirates of the Caribbean it's it's the setting that I really much like I'm looking forward to looking forward to Seafall for example because of that so um, but let's talk about Merchant Marauders it's a pickup and delivery game with some, it's not a forex, but it's a it's a Euro type and Merry Thrash, like a hybrid game, where you can also become a pirate and uh, you can attack uh, trading ships, you can attack other players and get uh, the victory points, the glory points that way, get the gold that way, extra goods that you can sell at ports, but you become wanted, and then the uh, the other ships will haunt you, uh, hunt you, sorry, haunt, hunt, hunt you, and which is really cool. But you can play as a merchant and trader who uh, just basically tries to pick goods from one side and sell them uh, somewhere where they are more expensive, basically, and get more gold, and you will get glory points that way as well. You also have some rumors going on and missions that you can take on and complete in order to get more. You can stash your gold in your home port. In your home port you can also go to tavern to hear some more rumors. You can upgrade your ship, you can buy a new ship which is bigger, mightier, and, uh, it goes faster, whatever. It's, it's, it's better in battle. There is battle going on as well. The battle mechanism is a little bit fiddly and it's long. I would say like, yeah, it's it's rather fiddly and, and it is long, uh, but I'm fine with it. Not all players, but I, I am fine with it. And the whole aspect of just being this merchant or a pirate or going to different uh, locations and picking up goods and sometimes attacking someone, it's just so cool. It's It gives me this vibe, this, this gives me this feeling of being in that time, you know? really cool really thematic game and we have the expansion uh which is season glory or it's basically we have this expansion modular expansion we which you haven't tried but we really want to try this expansion because i have heard that this expansion makes the game even better which could make it uh go higher into my list because it was in my top 10 at some point but some other games came in which are really cool as well. So, um, my number 16 is Merchants and Marauders. Wonderful game, wonderful. I think the best pirate merchant game out there. For me, at least. So, that's uh, Merchants and Marauders. Number 15 is a game that I was thinking about like selling, selling it at some point. But we played it recently and realized how great this game is and no, we will not sell it. And we played it with, with the expansion as well, with the Tacit expansion and of course I'm talking about Kemet. Kemet is a war game and we're not into war games. But Kemet has a really strong, uh, cool aspect of, of uh, Euro mechanics and tableau building and engine building where you are buying power tiles and you're customizing yourself with different power tiles. You're becoming more powerful in each turn. The other cool aspect is that the game makes you attack but it makes you also to plan strategically and be like a Euro gamer as well. So um, I like that in order to get the easy, easiest points to get is to attack someone and win the fight and you get the points. Sometimes you get the points for controlling temples and so you can just control temples and defend. You can, uh, for example, I, I think I attacked only once uh, in my last game. I, I, I won the game by having very many points. I mean like more than, you need to get up to 8 points, I had 11 or something like that, which is quite a lot, at least for me. Uh, <laughs> I attacked only once, as I remember, and everyone else tried to attack me, but I defended and I just uh, were in the right spots, in the right time, I took the right combinations of power tiles and I had everything set up for that win, you know, and it's really cool. A little bit of that sandbox feeling, 
it's an Egyptian theme, it's just a really cool hybrid game and it's another Excel collection of um, Matagot and we have uh, quite a few of them already, we are looking forward to Innis. It's just a great production, great game and thus that expansion makes it uh, even better where you have uh, a path of, of priests uh, where you can get extra bonuses which helped me a lot in, in our last game, that's why I won. And it's just the extra tiles, of course the black pyramids, black tiles, so you can now, basically the, there are now four pyramids with the expansion but you can only use three pyramids in the game so you will at some point decide which of the pyramids you will abandon basically so you will not get the power tiles of that pyramid because the pyramids are connected to power tiles but which makes the part of invading others pyramids much cooler because if I have red blue and white and I don't have black and I really want the black upgrade then I will go and in invade someone's black pyramid and get the benefits of that pyramid by buying the upgrade tiles, the power tiles. So that's really cool aspect. So that's Kemet, a really cool, big game, mighty game, but it doesn't have like complex rules at all, in my opinion. And it just, it's a conflict game, so be careful with that one. But I liked the hybrid style, like the Euro side of this game so much that I don't care that it's a war game. So that's Kemet, number 15. Number 14 is a game that I didn't believe uh, in at all and Alina wanted to try it quite much because of uh, our favorite designer Bruno Catala and that's Five Tribes. Five Tribes is a rather abstract game, it is an abstract game with Mancala aspect where you have different tribes, people and you are taking meeples, this uh, try people from uh, one spot and then going tile by tile to the to the finishing spot by and you're dropping one meeple each time when you go somewhere and you want you and and the last meeple that you will drop on a tile will trigger the tiles ability and will trigger that meeple as well with all the others the same color meeples that that are on the tile there so it's rather a really bad explanation that I gave you but but basically it's a mental aspect where you are trying to strategize which tiles you want to um, which tiles you want to activate and which meeples you want to get which tribes you want to get um, and f because of that you're thinking from what tiles should I pick these in order to get to this tile with these meeples so that's a really cool aspect and it has a set collection, it has this set collection of uh, goods and set collection of of course the meeples and the meeples have uh, some special powers which is really cool, it depends what you want so you will sort of find the way out and the genie cards are really cool where they give you more special abilities and customize your you as a player and bidding order uh, who goes first, who goes second. It plays well with two players. We have played it so far only with two players. So sorry for that. We haven't played it with three or four players, but it's still a wonderful, just a wonderful design. It's clean. It doesn't have many rules. It's just a wonderful game. And of course, we have the um, Artisans of Nakala, the ex first expansion. We have the mini expansion, uh, the Thieves of Nakala, but that we haven't tried yet. But the Artisans of Nakala is really cool. It it gives you this purple uh, meeples, which are basically the um, sixth tribe, uh, which has which, which has the ability of getting these magical tokens, magical powers, which are really cool powers, like like sort of a game-breaking powers, and some more genies and so on. It's and the mountains and the chasm, and I like the mountains are basically blocking the way, so it's not like a, a open board as it was in the base game, now you have some ways that are blocked so you need to go around and so on really cool, it's just wonderful game, 5 tribes number 14 number 13 is a tech building game which let me see is the highest tech building game on my list and without further ado, it's Valley of the Kings 
uh, Valley of the Kings is rather a simple deck building game with a set collection aspect, but the twist in this game is that you buy the cards from the pyramids, which also crumbles that uh, you, you get cards only from the base of the pyramid. So uh, there are further cards as well that you can get on the further turn or with special abilities of the cards. But basically the pyramid will crumble and the cards that are high on that you cannot get right now will go down and then you can buy them. And uh, the game has different sets and different sets behave a little bit differently. Uh, how they are, some of them are more nasty, some of them manipulate the deck more and so on, which is really uh, similar to Dale of Merchants. But what I like here is that it's like a rather standard deck builder where you acquire cards and then you get the new hand and basically buy cards or use their special abilities. But the coolest part is you have the entomb action. What that means? In order to get the points in this game, in order to win the game, you need to entomb cards. The cards that are entombed, that are in the tomb, will be used for scoring in, in the end of the game. Anything else which is in your hand or in your own deck will not score if it's not in the tomb. Which gives you a really cool choice. At some point you will get a really cool card that you want to use in your deck, you want to use during your turn. but this card is also a unique card that you want to get in your tomb in order to get higher points for set collection because there are different sets of cards so you you have to get uh, like there's a set of weapons for example or a set of um, artifacts and you want to get um, one of each like copy of, of, of uh, weapons for example so in order to get more points uh, you want to get unique unique cards but these unique cards also are really cool abilities. So at some point you need to be careful because the timing time is running as well. If the deck runs out, the game ends. And entombing action is rather costly. And for that you will of course acquire extra cards which give you better options for entombing more cards in, into, into that uh, tomb there. But it's really cool how you decide whether for this card to stay in your hand and in your deck in order to use its uh, gold value, in order to use its special ability or you will entomb it uh, which will give you extra points at the end of the game. So that's just a wonderful aspect of this deck builder. I have played it with four players, I've played it with two players and it plays almost the same. It doesn't have much downtime uh, regarding player count which is really cool and it's just a wonderful, although I like to play two player, just a wonderful deck builder with this small nice twist, not so many rules. It has the uh, Afterlife expansion, it will have the Last Rite expansion which came out right now already or will come out in Essen, I don't remember, basically Jenko or Essen, whatever. But it gives you more of the same but more variability regarding the, the set collection and decks which I'm really fine with because I don't want to, the game to become more complex. I want the game to stay the same and just want more variability. Maybe at some point if you add something cool new, why not? But right now I'm really much, pretty much fine with, uh, with the uh, base, base game, base mechanism there. So Valley of the Kings, a wonderful deck builder, really cool one, number 13. Uh, number 12. And I know that I'm babbling already quite much, but let's go to uh, number 12. It's only, only two games left now. And number 12 is a work replacement game, which um, was a blast when we, uh, when we got it, when we played it. But before that, we didn't really believe in this game. I thought, like, at that point, we didn't really play this Eurotype point salad sort of a work replacement games that much you know and we like the games that look great like fantasy flight style of art you know and that's it you know I'm rather a merry trash as well so but as we started going into Euro games more starting uh, seeing more of these cool games and one of these games is Manhattan Project and it's my number 12. Manhattan Project is a work replacement game where you have different workers 
and in order to win the game you need to build bombs and for these bombs you will uh, get points and whenever you get to the threshold whenever you get to a certain number of points you will win the game regarding uh, on the player count like based on the player count as well uh, the cool part is that uh, first of all you have your player mat which is basically nothing and there are some uh, spots on the board where you can get res resources like um, yellow cake which is basically uh, I think it's a uranium was it uranium sort of a well, whatever it is but res resource for that resources you can get plutonium uh, basically you can get plutonium uranium I don't remember what is yellow cake but it's a resource for that you can get plutonium uranium for uranium plutonium you will um, uh, buy basically bomb cards you will build bomb cards you need the fuel for them uh, and I like how you need it's like a little bit of an engine building that in order to become efficient in the game you need to get more and more building cards first you are vanilla then you go into building new cards you will get cooler cards and at like the, one of the first turns is like you just put one meeple there and that's it but at some point in the game like 60% um, 60, 60 into the game you will have some buildings on your own tableau and the, basically how it goes you uh, can put one meeple on the main board and then as many workers many meeples as you want so there are no peoples there are workers uh, tokens as many tokens as you want on your player board so it will be like you put one meeple on the main board and then you ha already have a variability of different buildings on the player board you'll do, 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 do I get resources from here which I can use on this card in order to get this one out of that I put worker here in order to get a better worker from here and then and there are different workers like laborers and scientists and uh, engineers which can be used on different locations and so on it's just a really cool engine building euro type um, worker placement game uh, with a interesting theme and this racing element where you need to build bombs uh, faster than others in order to win because you you have to get to this certain amount of points it's not like the game will end let's count points no if if like I don't, I don't remember the exact counts but let's like, say for a three player game uh, if somebody gets to 50 points he wins the game immediately which uh, all, which is really cool where if somebody builds one bomb and you see he got 27 points for this one bomb yeah that's quite much but um, then you start thinking like oh no oh no I haven't built any bombs so I have to hurry now I have to build like two bombs in a row and you start thinking how you can get to to that situation and so on so it's a wonderful worker placement game Manhattan Project and my number 11 the last one on today's list is a um, party game uh, like, all right uh, I'll, I'll say it right away it's code names and code names is a, a it's hard for me to call it a party game at some point because in party games you normally are funny and you laugh and you like um, shout and whatever you, you're like very active in code names one of you plays the spy master and everyone else on your team plays basically investigators or whatever they are and they are trying to find the words that you will give the clues for there is there's basically a grid of words some words are neutral some words are for the red team some words are for the blue team and which team gets their first uh, their words first is the winner of the game i really like the thinky part of this game but at some point you're all quiet you're thinking there what clue should I give because you can give a clue of one word one number and you cannot say the word which is the same as on the board basically which of, co of course for example if you have if you have a word foot and you have a word uh, let's say sport I cannot say football too because football foot I already uh, hinting on that word no I, I but I can say soccer I can say soccer too which means foot oh foot football yes and sports soccer is sports that's great you know 
uh, and um, you're trying to find and trying to chain as many words as possible during your turn, during your team's turn, which is really cool. But Codenames is just a wonderful game that you can play almost with everyone. And I, I would call it a Euro type, maybe, sort of a thinky type party game, which is not a loud party game. But if not the best one, then one of the best party games out there. But, but it's the best one on my list. There's so much uh, people are like people are to talking about code names constantly, so I wouldn't babble about it too much. So code names my number eleven, and that's it. Uh, we will uh, then go to mine and Alina's top ten of all time, where each of us will be present in the video. For example, in Alina's video, I will be present to comment on her picks and on. My video, Alina will be present to comment on my picks and choices, so it will be really cool. And also, we'll be uh, in Essen very soon, but before that we'll re of course record even more videos. And as always, please uh, follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, please uh, share our channel, share our tweets, whatever. Subscribe to our channel, go visit our guild, all the links to the guild, uh, to Instagram, whatever, they are in the description below. So go check them all out and we have a um, profile on BGG where you can uh, see our geek list of Essen releases and so on. There's so many things to, to look into, just go there, subscribe. Uh, follow our guild as well, we want to see some more discussions in the guild itself and tell me in the comments below uh, what picks were a surprise for you or maybe you want to say that this game sucks and why did you pick it for that place, particular place so, and so on. So thank you very much for watching and I see you then in some another, some other video I think. So bye bye.